Joining me now here on the MMA Report as the man's going to be challenging Nate Andrews for the CES lightweight title, CES 51, yeah. on Friday night, August the 3rd, Dewan Owens. It's been yes, a while, Dewan, since we had a chance to uh, talk. Yeah, How, how's things been, man? I've been good, man. Incredibly good. I definitely can't complain. Uh, busy, you know, juggling everything. Uh, had a lot of fights last year, a lot of, a lot of good momentum. So this is, this is perfect. This is the culmination of, uh, of all that hard work. So I'm excited about it. So when you get the call and it's, Hey, uh, we, we've got a title fight for you at CES. Mm. Were, uh, were you surprised? A little surprised to be honest with you. So last year I had an incredible amount of momentum and I had, uh, made my kickboxing debut. I, I won two kickboxing fights. I won two MMA, my, my two MMA fights and I won a title. And I won two uh, jujitsu super fights. So I was looking for uh, a CES fight last year. So I, I thought, okay, I'm going to have to have a fight, beat somebody, then fight for the title, right? So I was hitting pad up, hitting pad up. Then uh, this year, on my first title defense, I lost my title. So, you know, mentally, you know, I was bummed out. Uh, in my mind, I was like, okay, this is the run that's going to get me there. Like this streak is the streak. Everything in my like my life, the, the stars align. I'm on it. I'm pumped. You know, I'm on my shit. So so it didn't come. So after that, I kind of was just, you know, reorganizing, you know, how, how I want to do everything, re restructuring my life, you know, signed up uh, for school, you know, because I got to use the GI Bill. Uh, if you don't use it a certain amount of time, they'll take it. So um, so anyway, not thinking about a title shot. Right. Uh, get the call like, hey, you know, this opportunity is available for you. We want you to fight for the title. So at first I was, you know, not apprehensive, but I was like, man, shit, you know. Uh, but now I remember, look, man, opportunities don't come when you want them to, but but they come. You put the work in, they come. So my my credentials uh, and my track record spoke for itself. So I was like, you know what? It didn't come when I asked for it, but it came. Now I got to be ready for it. Be ready to execute. So I've been just going hard, man. And it, I think it took a while. It took about two weeks where I was training and I kind of was on that autopilot, like just forcing myself to be motivated. You know what I mean? Like you, you're reminding yourself like, Hey man, you know, I'm pretty sweet with this shit. You know, I'm pretty damn good. And then, but you're, but then, then something just clicked. Something just clicked. And I started looking forward to dieting. I started looking forward to running. I started looking forward to training. And, uh, right now I'm just, uh, I feel like a beast, man. I feel like a prime weapon. I always use the analogy when when opportunity knocks at your door, you got you got to open up that door because otherwise yes, someone, someone else is going to take that advantage of it. And exactly, you never know if that opportunity is going to come again. I mean, Look, exactly. I'm look. I'm gonna kick it down, man. I'm gonna kick it down. I mean, we got to be honest. CES it's one of the top promotions out there. Like outside of uh, UFC and Bellator, it's it's right along CES, LFA. It's that you know what I mean. That tier, PFL, same thing, right? But um, so a title shot is a big deal. That is what, you know, probably the majority of the incentive to say, you know what, let me go ahead and do this. Then the fact that school starting like mid-August and this is on the third, I feel like, man, everything lined up perfectly for me not to have my toe dipped in school and training at the same time. Let me just, you know, put it all in, put everything into this camp, man. So I'm, I'm pumped, man. Understatement of the year, but I, I'm ready. So what are you going to study in school? Uh, well, so I'm going back to I'm majoring in uh, K-12 education. So I'm going to teach eventually. Is there, uh, I mean, are you, you look at maybe the younger kids, older kids? Yeah, what, yeah. What are you so, looking at? So, yeah, so the way it works, if, if you're if you're teaching like uh, elementary or middle, then you can get like a generic, you know, uh, education, you know, but but if you're teaching high school, it's a high school age, I want to teach that. It's got to be a specific degree. So I'm going to be majoring in English. Yeah, my wife's a teacher, so I'm, I'm very, okay, uh, wonderful. very wonderful. familiar with, with how that goes. Yeah, yeah man. She's, it's, she's, it's, you know, you know, well, I don't know how to tell you that. You know what comes with it, but ultimately this work is important, man. It's very important. Is there is there a reason high school is kind of where you want to go? Yeah, I just think high school's at that that's that that turning point, man, where people can either go this way or they can go that way. You know, it's very you know it's it's a crucial time in someone's development, especially. Uh, I mean, elephant in the room. There's the, black men are only two percent of uh of the teachers, two percent, two percent. So it's it's very important. You know what I mean? It's very important, and I think that that's a very crucial age. Uh, I'm not too far removed from, you know, I remember, I remember how I felt. I remember how I just prioritized. It just wasn't important to me, you know, my, my reputation and, you know, clothes, who going, who, all that type of stuff is important to me. So I didn't really understand. And then um, specifically, you know, when I talk about my experience, uh, you know, a lot of times young males anyway were socialized into, um, 
prioritizing non-academic things. And again, that's even magnified when you talk about young black males. So I, I really, you know, I think some other things I've done in life, being in the Marine Corps, being a pro fighter, this can also help, you know, when it comes to um, how I relate to uh, some, some of the people that I want to influence. So, so yeah, that's pretty much the, the gist of the reason. Now, have you thought about when you do become a teacher and that student goes, Mr. Owens, um, I'm on YouTube here and I'm watching oh, you man. fight. Have you thought about how you're going to handle that? And, you know, I actually, I actually thought about something like that, like how they're going to play and everything. I mean, look, this is a digital era, man. Everything is online and it's staying online. You know, it's not going anywhere. So I try to maintain a, you know, a even keeled, even tempered uh, persona outside of just fighting, but even in the promo. But uh, so I wasn't thinking about a spot, the fight specifically, but some of these pre-fight interviews, man, you know, <laughs> you know how it gets. Last thing I need is somebody being like, oh, I heard you say, you know, you was going to bust his ass or this or that, you know. Can, can I cuss on here while, yeah. I'm, while I'm cursing? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. So it is definitely going to be some, you know, I don't know. I'm going to be sending some messages to some inactive YouTube accounts like, hey, man, you know, can you take this down, brother? I'll pay you, <laughs> you know. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy because I, I I'm in a I, my daytime job is marketing. What mm. I do on a day to day basis, I didn't go to school for because mm. there was no such thing as social media when I for went sure. to college. I yeah. mean, it, it, you got a general marketing degree, but what I do now is nothing I learned in college. Right. You know, so it's just it's you know I look at it, I've got a, a nephew who just graduated high school and the things he's able to do. I'm like, man, I wish I, I would have those, those opportunities. And, and and honestly, that's not just marketing. That's 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 anything, man. By the time you get out into the workforce, whatever you learn in school, it, it shit is obsolete, you know. Um, but you know, just like I know, the credentials are important. It's the it's the paper, you know. What I mean, it's the you know, hey, I'm certified in this, so now you know, can I do this? You know, if I didn't have to go back, if I didn't want to teach, I would not go back to school, you know. Yeah, I I don't think I'd ever want to go back to school. <laughs> just, <laughs> just being honest about it, I don't yeah. I don't think I would definitely. But you got, I mean, huge opportunity, Nate. Uh, you know, obviously yep. has a great record, CES champion. Um, Incredible record. As you as you looked at his his abilities, what was was there something mm -hmm. that stuck out to you? Like this is why he has the record he has. Yeah. So so here's what I learned. So obviously, when you when you when you look at Nate, the first thing that jumps out is his record. I mean, for an MMA record, that's that's a crazy record. Boxing, we see stuff like that all the time. But MMA. It's just so many damn variables, man. You know what I mean? There's so many ways to to uh, to lose. You know what I mean? So he's obviously been doing well. Um, but, you know, obviously in the spectrum, when I look at him, I do not see uh, any specific area where I believe he's more skilled than me. Uh, my striking is better. Uh, my jujitsu is better. My wrestling is better. Uh, I, I've definitely, definitely fought and beat higher caliber opponents. Um, in addition to, you know, being, you know, UFC best, best, best fighting around the world. One thing about him that, you know, uh, and I know a lot of people, what was the guy he just fought, Tyler? I was looking at one of his interviews a while back. A lot of people say, he, you know, he's been hand fed. And I don't, you know, I don't think he's been fed opponents, but I do believe he's been groomed. Like, let's, I'm not going to say I believe he, he has been groomed. Let's stop, you know, no need to, to, to lie about that. But I think his most recent fights, like the last four or five, they've been progressively you know what I mean? And some of these guys have been tough. He beat a teammate of mine, George Shepard, and George is a beast. So I know he has fought good guys. Um, one thing that stands out about him, the, you know, his resilience. You know, I've seen times where he's getting crushed, you know, like maybe two fights. And he comes back, man. He hangs tough. It's not over till it's over. But honestly, I think we're just operating on two totally different levels, man. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I'm no need for false modesty, but I'm incredibly technical incredibly well-rounded and um i just can't wait to go out there and um and, and, and show them you know and represent bring this belt back the fight you mentioned tower cones back there cs 47 oh. and he's coming off oh. that win uh against cs 49 against chris padilla back there yeah uh, padilla look padilla looked pretty good combs look no disrespect to combs combs looked like he came straight off the damn couch uh combs might you know you can tell that he was a skilled fighter, like at some point, you know, he probably was. But let's be honest, man. When you fight somebody is is important. When in your development you fight somebody, is this guy on the upturn, the downturn? Mm -hmm. Tyler Combs is, to me, on the back end of his, you know, career. I mean, for to be, what was that, to fight at 55, you can't carry that kind of body fat, man. If you, you know, if you're in, if you're a, a middleweight or something like that, you know, light, heavy, heavy, fine. 
But at our weight class, that's just useless. It's just useless weight. And it just, you know, again, I'm not going to sit up here bullshitting. He looked like he came straight off the couch. You know, Nate did what he had to do. Don't get it twisted. You know, Nate, Nate, you know, he didn't go to close the decision with him. He, he took him out. Cool. But I, I'm, I'm telling you, man, these, these guys, he's, he's been fighting. You know, he hasn't fought anyone as dangerous as me. Mm -hmm. And when you, as you, all the fights you've looked at, is there any, is there someone that stuck out to you said that is the most dangerous guy he's fought prior to facing me? Well, he, like I said, he beat a buddy of mine, George. George, I don't, I wouldn't say he's particularly dangerous in anywhere, but George is a beast, man. He's an incredible, you know, he's gifted, you know, athletically. His, his wrestling is, is on point. Um, and George was dominating him. But, you know, again, that goes back to that resilience. And, um, you know, Nate Andrews, he's a competitor. He's a winner. You know, a, a lot of times when you look at guys like that, and I've learned this in the past, you see a guy on paper, they got a good, really good work, a lot of wins. You're like, man, I'm watching the fight, but I don't, I, I don't see anything about it. There's something. You can't see it. Maybe you can't see it online, but this guy is doing something. You know what I'm saying? The guys aren't just rolling over for him. So it's some intangible. You know what I'm saying? It's some shit that is maybe not standing out. You know what I mean? Maybe, you know, not, I don't think in Nate's case, but in some other guys, maybe this guy's just really strong. Maybe this guy's really, you know, whatever it is. So, you know. He fights to win, you know, but uh, like I said, I'm just I'm operating on another level, man. Yeah, I'm operating on another level. And I think um, at this point in my development, this is just a, a horrible time for him to, uh, to 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 fight me. You know, the last time I fought on CES, you know, same thing, had a crazy streak. Then I went to Russia, uh, lost a uh, split decision in Russia and I fought on CES. I fought Louis Felix. Man, I came in there on some Tyler Combs shit. You know, I was not in shape. Uh, <laughs> I ain't look like Tyler Combs, but I was in shape. I wasn't training. I wasn't. You. Know, I didn't do what uh, you know what what I, what I was supposed to do. Lost the decision to Felix. So I'm excited about you know getting that back. Really showing what I can do. And um, you know, I know Felix was one of his training partners. So if he's you know, there's got to be some level of like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Mm -hmm. Trust me, when we fight, it, I'm just pumped, man. That was all the way back in the uh, beginning of 2015. I mean, that was... Uh, it was, man. You know, in it MMA, was. I, it, you feel like that was a long time ago, but in, really it wasn't. It was just, it was know, just it, a couple of years ago. It wasn't, man. I, I was, uh, at that point, I was training full-time in Virginia. So, you know, I was down there. You know, my wife and I had, you know, we were just... It was wintertime. You know how it is, man. So then I, I, I went up to, to damn Virginia and basically had fat camp. You know what I mean? Like, let me... Do, we, uh, 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 I, I just, I, look... I live in Florida, Dewan. I am not well, trying to do, deal no with more. the cold. Not trying to right. deal with it. Yeah, that's not my nature. So, so, so that. Uh, so again, one thing I learned about uh, last year, especially the results I had last year, the preparation, man. Like my body, I systematic. I, like I created a schedule on, on, on what I do. Like I, I've been much more uh, system, systematic with that, and and I think that that makes all the change, man. And when we talk about Nate Andrews again, no, no, no knock on this guy. This isn't, you know, he, he does what he's supposed to do. But, you know, another elephant in the room, like this guy, he was fortunate enough to be born in a place that had a high level gym. He fought for CES like what, 12 damn times? Almost all of his fights are there. And um, again, cool. But that's a different. I came up with the hard rock. I got to do my first 10 pro fights, six or seven out of those 10 fights. I was the main event fighting somebody else in their hometown. And I won the majority of those times. You see what I'm saying? But I wasn't supposed to. But but and it's not because I didn't want to fight here. They didn't have any pro MMA here. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We didn't they, we didn't have any damn pro show here. So the beauty in this is like we took different paths like but our our paths intersecting right here. These lines crossing and I'm going to show them. You know, who was it? Twain that said the the, the you know the path that's, that's less taken to make all the difference. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let him know. I came with the hard route. You've been fucking around, bullshitting, fighting chumps, getting groomed, easing into it. Then when you fight better guys, it's some little janky shit. Oh, well, you know, we're we going to call you on three weeks. We're going to call you on four weeks. We're going to call you five weeks notice. Whatever. And again, not his fault. But just, again, tune in. Would you, do you like revel at the fact of going into your opponent's backyard I mean, you've done this so many times is it one of the yeah. things that like you're just like you know what i i just i love this no i mean honestly it doesn't make a difference to me i i don't care I, one thing i do like about going somewhere is like i don't have to think about selling tickets 
You know, because my people, everybody want to buy tickets at the last damn minute. Everybody want to wait till you cut and wait. Hey, man, you got a ticket? Then you got other folks. Hey, can you get me in there for free? Fool, no. How the promoter going to make money? I can't get you in there for free. So I don't got to deal with a lot of that. But, um, you know, I'm one of the people. Once I'm in the cage, I'm in the cage. You know what I mean? I, I train hard for everybody. Um, I fight. You know, if the guy's good, I, it, it doesn't matter. You know, the better the guy is, the better I fight, honestly. Um, you know, it's obviously it's le less pressure. You know, um, sometimes the hard fights are the ones where you, you're you supposed to mow through the guy because you're like, man, shit, you know, I can't just beat him. I got to, like, really, you know, highlight the joker. So, I mean, uh, him being the, 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 the favorite on, on paper up there, you know, because, again, I, it's on him. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm going to go out there and do what I got to do either way, and uh, I'm, I'm bringing that belt back. The, the the selling of the tickets, I think, is is a part of this business that fans just don't understand. Like, yeah. I mean, and I, I've heard that story from so many fighters. Like, um, it's like day of the fight, and people are like, "Hey, Dude. man, you got tickets?" I'm like, "Dude, Dude. I've been selling tickets for six weeks. Where right, you been?" Man. Right. Now did that come to me? So now I just you know, especially here, uh, MMA has been you know getting bigger here. So we have a few promotions now. I'll just have uh, tickets at certain uh, locations to be like, yo, you can pick them up from here, here, or there. <laughs> Best way to do it. You know, unless it's somebody, especially because, let's be honest, the majority of people that buy the tickets are people who train or, you know, do jiu-jitsu or something like that. So I drop them off at the gyms. Then people that I'm really cool with, like on a personal level, they can come to me. But I'm not, I'm a grown man. I ain't doing all that damn running around. You know what I'm saying? Somebody training to whoop my ass and I'm, I'm over here trying to sell tickets. So it's always so a balance too. So, you know, fighters, obviously, we got to build our platform. You know, we want to sell tickets. That's incentive for uh, promoters to not only pay you more, mm -hmm. but um, to get you on cars. But also, it's some lazy-ass promoters out here, too, man. You know what I mean? We got to, we got to, don't get it twisted. I see these guys taking advantage of amateurs. I'm like, these guys not even getting paid, but you're still on this guy's ass about selling tickets. Are you going to get in there and do a round for him? How about you do a round for him, then he'll focus on selling more tickets. Or, I'll, or, or they'll have these janky, cheap-looking flyers. Come on, man. Drop a little bit of paper. Make a make a good looking flyer that we want to share. That's what I like about CS. They threw they did the cold ass flyer. I'm happy to share that and promote yeah. that. But I've I've seen I've had some fights. I'm like, man, what is this trash? I'm not putting this garbage up. Yeah, it's uh, I, I've always told you tell people like if you're a regional fighter and you can sell tickets, you can have a little bit of a bidding war for your services. If, yeah. if, the, if these promoters know that you can push two, three, four hundred people in the building. Oh, the, you get you, that's where it's very beneficial on the regional scene. But oh, for sure. Yeah, but if man, you can't yeah. sell tickets, you, you're you're in a tough situation. That's true, and you got to win too. You got to be a good fighter yeah. too, man. This is another thing. Like people can rock with you, so they'll probably come see you a couple of times. Like, yeah, he might do, but but shit, you know, he always like you got to be able to, you know, you got to be able to win. You got to be able to put on a show. So you know, that's one thing that I've been, you know, I don't take for granted, man. I've had a solid uh, block of support. Since the beginning of my career, man. But when I show again, I'm doing some. When I fight, I'm doing some swagged out shit, man. I'm not. You know, you see me fight. You know, I'm I'm I'm, out, I'm not playing out there. You know what I mean? Not only am I trying, to, am I always going for the finish, but I want to do it in the most artistic, martial. I, I don't know. I just want to do fly shit in the cage, man. Shit, people think about doing. I want to do that stuff in the fight, and I and I and I do it in the fight. And we get to see it all on Friday night, August the 3rd. Yes, Look forward to see what you might pull out inside this yeah, CBS man. cage, man. DeWan, as always, I appreciate, appreciate your time. You, uh, where can everybody follow you out on social media? Yeah, man, check me out on uh, – I'm just getting hip to this Instagram, guys. So DeWan, and I believe it's four underscores. If it's not four, try three. So DJUAN, four underscores. On Facebook, just DeWan Owens. You know, I got a fan page. My sister helps with that, uh, DeWan, Dirty South Owens. But you type in DeWan Owens, my personal page and my fan page will come up. Uh, you can, you can, you know, I'll add you on my, my fan page too, as long as you're not, you know, posting craziness, you posting kids fighting or, or you getting too damn political, you know, I'm an unfriend your ass, but I can't, I can't stand, me. I can't bro, stand the political bro. tweets. I can't, it's, I can't stand it. I don't honestly, people who are really vested in it and they're actively doing something fine, but, but complaining about certain stuff is not fighting the power. So sometimes you see people just going on these crazy, I'm like, dude, like no one cares. No one cares. Yeah, I, I've it, always lived by the motto of uh, the only reason you, if in my world, only reason I should talk politics if I'm a political reporter. I'm an MMA, that's it. I'm an MMA reporter. No one wants to hear what I have to think. Right. Listen, race, politics, religion. Be careful. You know what I mean. And you, and again, you can talk about it, but you have people that just like you, I don't need to tell you that. If you want social media, you've seen the similar. I hate going to family functions where they start talking politics. Dude. 
Dude. I can't. I, I'm like, I got to get out of the situation. It's so crazy how you can love someone or outside of that realm, they seem like a, a, a rational, a fully functioning rational human. And then when they start going this, you're like, what? I can't believe you think like that. You really think <laughs> yeah. like that. So people don't understand, man. They be messing themselves up, man. I, real quick, not to get off topic, but I, it, was, it was a situation where this guy needed help. I could have helped him with something. But I saw some, he ain't my boy like that. I saw some shit he posted like a week ago. And that alone, he don't notice. But that dumb shit you posted <laughs> stopped me from helping you. I, I was like, no. But you kind of come full circle with this is my my nephew is 18. He wants to go into mm. real estate. And mm. I'm having the conversation with him. You need to start looking back at everything you posted. Dude. because or just get a, no, get a whole new damn page if it's that bad. Like, because I'm that stuff is going to get used against you. Yeah, man. I mean, the worst thing is those, those Facebook memories where you see something you posted like six years ago. You're like, what the hell was I thinking? Mm-hmm. And you know, it's nothing's off the internet. It ain't shit off the no, internet. No, You didn't leave that. This is not going anywhere. Because you, you, see, you see. You don't want to see if there's a timestamp. It's like one o'clock in the morning when you post that, you know, you, know, you might have had a few, uh, a few cocktails in your system. Crazy times we're living in, man. But, you know, there's also another level of accountability. So I just sit back and watch and laugh. So it's oh, all, it's it, all, it's, it's it, it could be some great comedy. But, Dewan, man, as always, I appreciate time. Look forward to seeing the no fight doubt, here man. next week. Hey, it's going down, man. Can't wait, man. See you soon.